Welcome to the Real Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Bruce. And uh, I'm here with E, man. What's going on, bro? How you doing, brother? Good, good. Good to be back again. Same, man. Same, man, this bro. Year getting ready to, uh, it's getting ready to leave us, man. It's right around the corner, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy how fast like, it came. You know what I'm saying? And in this case, it went. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how it is, bro. Life. Uh, I wanted to say real quick, bro. Um, man, I want to apologize to our listeners, bro. Uh, with 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 posting, uh, it's been about like two weeks since we last put anything up, and uh, I just had to give you guys an update. Um, I haven't given you guys an update on anything, so uh, we back on track. You know, we back on um, to our posting regular schedule, and uh, we just had to get some logistics, some strategies together, man. But we back on track. And I appreciate you guys sticking around uh, to listen. So, um, you want to introduce the topic, bro? I'll let you do the honors today, man. All right, man. So, um, how do you turn on the proverbial light switch, right? And I heard you say um, you can't really turn it on. It ain't really something you can turn on, but something you can harness. True. Right. Yeah. So, like, what did you mean by that? How did you, how did it how did that uh, come to mind? What made you think about that? Um, so the proverbial light switch uh how do you turn it on we all you know we all go into this world well we travel through this world and we oftentimes we come up on uh like if you're a writer you stumble across a writer's block or it's just you know you have that creative as a as a creative individual you always like to feel like you know you're just free to create um, free to think, free to speak, um, just to pour forth and just, you know, release whatever content it is that God put in you to release. But then oftentimes, like I just spoke about, like, you know, as, as being a writer or whatever in this life, oftentimes you're faced with, you know, these periods in which you, you can't, it's just like you stuck, yeah. you know, and people say stuck, stuck in a rut, right? <laughs> You know, you're just in a hard place, man. You can't, you just feel like, man, I couldn't give birth to something artistic if, you know. It if looking I, me in the face. Yeah, yeah. If right. it was saying I'm artistic and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm it. I'm what you're looking for. That's real. But you, you know, oftentimes we're looking for, we're looking for something profound, man. Something spectacular, you know, mm-hmm. something extraordinary. And we say, yeah, that's it. Um, but, you know, oftentimes it doesn't. It doesn't go down like that. It could just merely be something um, as simplistic as an idea, just a you know a, a small idea, something you know big enough for you to just build upon. Though Facts. you know, you just gotta grasp it first, and you gotta you know, um, like I said, you know, um, we look for that artistic light switch, you know, like to be able to just go to it on demand and just flip, you know, yeah. flip that switch and say. Hey, I got it. That's it. But it, 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 yeah, it, it doesn't, like I said, it never works out like that. But you can harness the ideas that, you know, you, you can you can think about, you know, so many different things throughout a day. And just you pull from one idea and say, okay, I'm going to just take this, I'm going to jot it down, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to shape it around this, this thought or idea and mm-hmm. see what you get. But oftentimes we let those things go because we like, if, if it's, it's a, as though you were a fisherman. And you get a catch, and you say, "No, nah, this fish here is small." But yeah. you're depending on this thought. You like, man, I'm gonna I'm get, I'm gonna I'm catch something bigger than this. You know, I know as as big as this body of water is, it's something bigger than this in this body, which is true. It is something bigger. But this might just be the day that the smaller things are biting. So with right. that, to tell you, if you get a, you know, if you get a plethora of small things biting, and you just catch all of those small things. You can still build a great meal later on. Thanks, bro. But if you sitting there saying, nah, I'm not after this this size of day, and you throwing all of those back, but you notice you keep catching small fish and you keep throwing them back, you're not eating. I'm telling you, bro. You, know? you, going, home, you going home with an empty stomach. Exactly. Because you, you was after this this false idea that you gave to self, like, you know, I need something big today. Something big is going, that's, yeah, that's what the house going to eat off something big. I want a <laughs> whale, you know. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. When you say that, because I'm thinking about like sustainability, and like we're running, like it ain't really, <clears throat> it ain't really uh, how fast you get to the finish line, but it's about like your pace. You know what I'm saying? And every great runner that I ever seen, long distance runner, they have a pace setter. 
Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about going the fastest. They ain't trying to find the fastest person. They just trying to find somebody to keep the pace. You feel me? Yeah, man. That's big too. I People come like, out the gate, man. I'm talking about get. Yeah, man. man. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. I'm like, uh, you mentioned something to me, um, with what was his name who created Disney? You talking about Walt? Yeah. Okay. What was the what was the percentage rule, bro, that uh that we talked about, man? What we talked about, um, with um <laughs> so the uh the logo per se. Um so I was watching, you know, watching uh a documentary, so to speak, uh, and it was talking about the creation of, you know, um pretty much of Mickey. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And what he was uh individual came on there and said, Man, two dimes. Two dimes and a quarter. How much is that? That's 45, 45 cents. So I got to thinking about that. I was like, man, so 45% of an idea, with four, with 45% of an idea, he came out and he became a billionaire Crazy, plus. Crazy, bro. So, and we often, and you know, oftentimes we, we sit up there and what we do is um, we try to push ourselves, man. And it's like, um, like the ideas we, you know, oftentimes we looking for, we quick to say, okay, the percentage that the percentage, if we if we looked at effort and we counted effort in a percentage type yeah. of way, we say, you know, well, we we looking for you not even giving fifty percent of your effort, your maximum effort. In this case, it shows you that you don't even need fifty percent, bro. You crazy. know, maybe we was looking at things a little, you know, a, a little wrong. So I guess now with with all of that being said, I guess. To be honest, I guess we should challenge ourselves to into believing that you just need to put forth effort, Thanks. you know. And let's just say your your forty five percent of effort could be different than my forty five percent of effort, but then that could your forty five percent of effort could actually equate to somebody else's fifty percent in Thanks. effort or somebody's eighty percent in effort. Again, see that's the thing you can't really go about saying that you can weigh effort. Because it ain't no way you can do that at all. See that right there again. It's just like going back to the fish. You you know you fishing. You know now it's just the thought, the <clears> idea. <throat> Grasp the thought and the idea and say to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna just go out here today, while I'm on this water, and I'm gonna just give forth effort. Facts, man. You don't sit up there and say, you know, yeah, the effort that I'm looking for. You know, I you know my production better be a whale. It better be a whale of an ending. <laughs> I it's mean, crazy though, bro. But again, even with that perception, is different. But your well, your well of an ending could result in the same, in the same type of uh, results. But it may look different. You can yeah. get enough small fish that could equate to a well. Nah, that's facts. But again, you still want. You it's, get enough of those and you sell them. Hey, it's still the same. Still the same outcome at the end of the day. There you go. I think that's crazy, bro. And the reason I had you bring that up was because um, a lot of us are plagued with disease or dis-ease, right? Mm, and like when we talk about dis-ease, in the manner I'm thinking about it, it's like an uneasy feeling of oneself. Like you're uncomfortable with yourself or you just have a bad feeling about yourself. And you can't really enjoy yourself a life because you're in a state of dis-ease. You know what I'm saying? So dis-ease can also cause discomfort. Discomfort, bro. And it's crazy, bro. And I was and the reason like we was talking about effort, you know, percentage-wise, things of that nature. And when we first started the conversation, it's like, write down what you want. You know what I'm saying? Write it down. And from writing it down, read what you wrote. You know what I'm saying? See the vision. Then you gotta work on materializing it. You know, and that look that look different from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a different way of materializing stuff. And if you don't write it down, uh, you're gonna get distracted from your focus and you get pulled saying? away from you're it. You're gonna get pulled away from it, bro. Um, and I just thought that was important, bro. That's why I brought that up. But uh, I wanted to have like a back and forth conversation about this, man. This whole light switch thing, and just feel free to jump in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So. Let's go. I was thinking about um, if I was talking to my old self, my old past self, and I might say, how do I flip that light switch? How do I go about doing that? And I'm thinking like, OK, cool. You're not really look around you, looking in your environment. You're not really taking advantage of new opportunities. Uh, you might be stuck thinking in the past um, what you was 
like in the past, what, what all the fun you had, the life you lived, the good old days. But you got to be present. You got to look around you, see who's next to you, see what you have in front of you and take full advantage of the opportunities available to you. And everyone has them. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what your situation look like. Like you always got an opportunity to look forward to. So I got a question for you. What's up? All right. So you say if you were having a conversation with your old self. Yeah. Which version of your old self? I could even go back just two, three years ago, bro. It ain't even okay. got to be like my teenage self. Okay. Um, so that version of you two or three years ago, what version are we talking about? What, what, okay, what were the issues that that version of you was dealing with? Oh, man. Um, I didn't have focus, bro. Like, I wasn't really, like, super focused. You know what I'm saying? And it was more or less like... Um, I was just out here, bro. Like no boundaries. We talked about it before. Okay. Like no boundaries, bro. Um, I kind of felt like I was like partying too much, lip drinking too much, uh, spending too much, and I didn't have no set parameters for myself to uh, keep my focus. You know okay. what I'm saying? I know. I understand. So with that, most people say at that point, a lot of people are on autopilot. What's Facts. autopilot? Facts. What, what is that though? For me, bro, it's just like man, YOLO. <laughs> you you only me? live once. Yes, that YOLO okay. lifestyle, bro. That that YOLO mindset. So is that? Let's let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, because it's you know a couple of years ago, man, that was the biggest quote that ever existed. <laughs> it seems you know, or the best thing since sliced bread. It Facts. seems. All right, so YOLO, you only live once. So with that, you know, with YOLO. It, to me, that was one of the most dangerous things that ever came out, right, from a person's mouth. And people really, like, gravitated toward and applied it to their life because I look at this, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this okay. is just my opinion. Yeah. So, for example, it's like, let's just say you cautious and you cognizant of the fact that diseases you know, diseases exist in this world. Mm -hmm. It's funny. You just talked about diseases. Now I'm talking about them, right? So knowing that these things exist in this world, if somebody came out and somebody said, okay, I got a cure for every disease that's in this world. So to be honest with you, do you. I got the, <laughs> I got the cure here. So what is it going? I mean, what's that going to cost me though? You feel me? Like That's what we get into. So again, now you could forget everything that you was taught. They, you know, pretty much if somebody, t all right, just going to take this shot and go ahead and you're just, good. yeah, you good. Straight, you bro. Just, yeah. Whatever, whatever. Exactly. You, me? you know what I'm saying? It's go mode. All systems <laughs> black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I That's mean, crazy, though, but bro. Like, That's funny. Think about that, though. Immediately, I call this the, the immortality complex. That's mm -hmm. what I tend to look at this as, right? And I say that because people, be people begin to think that the immune to anything at yeah. this point so if people so oftentimes what happens in life if you feel like nothing can't harm you then why use safety you know yeah like parameters why that's real like what, what type of world will we be living in then the purge <laughs> like, that's what kind of mind a movie the purge bro because it's like if you if you living like that then um I mean, I think of like where your morals stand at. You know what I'm saying? What you stand on? What your character look like? But see, then okay, so that becomes that becomes the huge test. You set them out for your morals. Do most people continue to go by morals or YOLO? That's that's tricky, bro. Like, cause uh, that's real tricky, man. Um. See, I look at, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I asked that. I'm looking at life right now, and I slowly start seeing certain things creeping out, right? What's up? So, for example, like, you know, um, COVID. Look mm -hmm. at the vaccine and stuff like that, right? And your decision on that is your decision. We're not here to tap into all of that, the controversies behind all of that. But what I, the first thing I noticed when the vaccine was offered, most people stopped wanting to wear their masks. Yeah. Like, it stopped existing. Why? Because in a the sense, they say, you know what? I already, you know, true that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been vaccinated, you know. So with that, then you got like HIV. You got stuff out there. You see the commercials come on and stuff like that. I think it's called uh, prep or something like that. Mm -hmm. But even with that, now a lot of people out there unprotected sex. You That's know, real. 
That's but real. But they, they might they, they mess around and say, what, I'm on prep. <laughs> That's real, though. You know what I'm saying? That's scary, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. That's scary. It is like, so with that being said, today's version of you, if you can have a conversation with you and your mentality back then mm. was YOLO, but you was living in today's world. Hmm. I just, I don't see myself making as much progress. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'd be going in, uh, I would be taking one step forward, five steps back. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because it's like, <clears throat> your mindset is focused, my mindset was focused on, um, it, uh, not accelerating, what's the word I'm looking for? My mindset was focused on moving forward in life, but some of my actions and some of my habits- Was pulling you back. Yeah, it was pulling me back. So- uh, today in today's like and now with the resources I have now I feel like it'll just expedite that you know what I'm so saying so you feel more grounded in your beliefs yeah and, yeah now yeah. To, in today's time so it's like if I was moving how I was moving back then I feel like it'll uh, expedite and destruction is a is a um, strong word but it would expedite my five steps back mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so with that being said so you're grounded more in your beliefs now so what what creates uh, the potential to be grounded Gravity So the gravity of the situation As you Facts. see it now Yeah 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 Exactly You like bro. I'm firm in this Life is more Perspective wise You know what I'm saying It's put more into perspective And um, I think like uh, As you go through life You know what I'm saying Simple as that And then as you get around people Like as you Like yourself You know what I'm saying Having conversations like that um, Going through life And seeing my Like people around me Moving how I'm moving they may have got caught up with something or they may have something, something negative may have happened to them. And it's like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? That could have been me. Um, stuff like that. And it's just like, then I start reassessing, all right, what do I really want in life? And like I said before, like, you got to write it, read what you wrote, and then materialize what you wrote. You know what I'm saying? So it's like me writing down my goals, um, me reading my goals, and then realizing, like, I got to reassess some of my habits. So when you write it down and mm -hmm. then you reread it, what is that? The refreshing phase? It's, it's for me, it's like reminding myself because like as you go through life, as you go through your day, like I was thinking about this, bro, like going to the gym, waking up early, that's the easiest part of my day. The easiest part of my day is going to the gym, waking up, working out, you know what I'm saying? Slaying my body. The hardest part of my day is going through the rest of my day. And the reason that is, is because I got so much adversity. I got people, places, and things pulling at my time, pulling at my focus. And I feel like adversity is an attack on your focus. You know what I'm saying? So what was the, what was the question you just asked me? I'm sorry, man. I, I you you had me. I'm, <laughs> no, I was stuck. I, like it's funny you because I'm <laughs> what I got on just now when you was talking about adversity, right? Yeah. And um. Like all of a sudden Another definition came to me From what you was talking about uh, Dealing with adversity And um, you said it, You know It's like an all out attack In a sense Yeah right? it is though bro You know To me it's a character builder It's like because We can sit up here And say all day We this We that And like to be honest with you You can say all day Okay If you come from um, royalty right Yeah But then you've been uh, Detached from royalty But you know for a fact You come from royalty but then your mission is to get back to royalty, you know, in the midst of, you know, going through that mission to get back to royalty, you're going to go through adversity. Right. And the whole right. time in the midst of adversity, you will always find a point in which you reach rock bottom. It seems like mm -hmm. you had at the, at the very, you know, you at that point and you like, yo, I could just let this all go. Facts. And the easiest thing at that point in time is quit, quit. Just quit yep. But then that's when You have to reassure yourself Of who you are When nobody else Believe it no more Number one Now you bleeding Now people looking at Oh he's human He's be, uh, bleeding But not showing What that blood is made of The royalty that's in your DNA You rise from it You know Thanks. Pull yourself up Show them that you more Than what you know Meets the eye It's like You always got the man It's, it's, it's amazing man Cause through the adversity That's what Will make you That's what Ultimately Defines you fact, Or redefines right. you I feel like you don't Really know yourself Until you hit Some type of adversity Exactly bro. Exactly talk. And it's like Okay I don't mean to um, I don't mean to drag no, no, this no, out. No, I'm going to say bro. One other thing So like as a writer Right mm -hmm. So you say you write in, um, You write in Let's just say You write in about a character And then you You know you, You're like Yo I think I got a I think I got a great idea You know uh, That I could take in Um I can create this this particular character. 
Yeah. And then somebody say, yo, that's that's cool. But okay. That could become rather boring if this character is too strong, if this character uh exhibits no weaknesses, if this character just seems like he trumps everything. Then you know, somebody's like, you know what this character needs, right? No, what the character need? Character actually needs someone to compete against. So oftentimes, you know, in comics, that's when you have a hero and then you have a villain. Yeah. But a lot of people would sit up there and a lot of people would say, your hero, t- your hero is only as good as your villain. Why you say that? Because depending on how great of a villain you have, that villain can be so twisted that he can take and it, it, he can take and put this hero to a point in mm-hmm. which he reaches rock bottom like you've never seen before. Now people are invested. Okay, what this character going? What the hero going to do now? Yeah, you know, I, the, the, the character, the, this hero has defeated everything. You know, up until this present. Then all of a sudden, this real this, this villain comes along, and everybody's like, "Wow, like this villain, man, the villain not playing no games." Nah, that's like, one hundred percent true. Buddy is twisted, but now he's pushed him to the point to where he's actually helped define him or redefine him so now the, the hero becomes more becomes more believable than he's ever been simply because he made it out of this adverse situation in which your villain created that's why they say for a good hero like it's just like they you know they say behind every great man is a great woman yeah the same applies it's always you and I hate to say it man but it's, it it's the sense. truth it makes a lot of sense you so great but what makes a person you know, memorable at the end of the day. If you sit up there and you ain't never, you never been through nothing, then people don't really believe him. Facts, facts, bro. I mean, why am I believe him? He always, <laughs> he was born with a, you know, with a silver spoon in his mouth, a gold spoon. You know, I can't relate to him. Like <laughs> for real, that's perfect. But that's the perfect moment way, this brother had to dig himself out the trenches, yo, bro, mad respect for yeah, you, bro. Yeah, when you, yeah. you know, your story, bro. When you can't, bro, that touched me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a grown man, bro. I was about to break down, man, because I've been there last year in my life. You can That's relate 100%, to that. bro. That's all I'm saying. real, man. Nah, I, I, I fully uh, believe that, bro. Because it's real. Like you said, it brings a whole, other, whole other respect level to it. You know what I mean? Um, Like, it made me think, bro. Like, you was talking about adversity with the whole villain thing. And I think I'm speaking to like my introverts now, bro. Like a lot of times or the people that's like conflict averse, um, you don't take risks or like share your ideas, your opinions because you you fear being wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's so deeply ingrained because that's how you've been operating like your whole life. But you got to like move away from being so agreeable and offer your contribution, whether it's used or not. Just offer your contribution and it's going to show you whether you're growing or not. Um, you think by playing it safe that you know um, you think that playing it safe is you protecting yourself or maybe you saying alright cool I'm cool I'm just gonna play the back end role but that's really hiding you know what I'm saying that could really be perceived as hiding <laughs> and that's a sil- and like it's a cover up with your silence for fear to be honest bro and I was thinking of right like leaders con- contribute leaders add a contribution to something um, and leaders know that with contributing, uh, you can't be afraid to take risks. There's always like a risk involved in anything. And um, sometimes I think social media kind of played an effect on that. And I was looking up stats on LeBron James because it seems like leaders and winners, they never lose, bro. You know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King never had a bad speech. You sure you, you sure you, you trying to take it here? Like for you know, real, bro. Man. Now, you sure you trying to take it here? I'm a LeBron here. Yo, you sure you want to take it here? So I was looking at the stats. I'm like, um, LeBron shot 27,000 shots in his career. Um, I know he made 27,000 shots, I believe it was. He either shot or made. Either way, that's a large, large number. But he missed 13,000. You know what I'm saying? And I, it just made, like, when we were talking about the whole villain and hero thing, it just made me think, like, bro, like, we sometimes get caught up, um, maybe not speaking up or letting our fear take over, our doubt take over, um, and keep us from making that switch or keep us from operating against that adversity. But, you know, even the greats, bro, like, they've always experienced that or even they've had losses. So I just, like, I feel like sometimes uh, we get perceived, we get the wrong perception about that. Okay, I got a question for you about that. What's Le- up, LeBron? Um, stats. Now, that's repeat that again for me. 
Uh, he made twenty seven thousand shots, but missed thirteen thousand. Okay, and this is over his career, or is this like when? Like, uh, I don't know if that's in his. I'm I'm pretty sure that's over his career. I'm not too sure. I gotta fact check that. And you say it, that's that we we need to do that now because one thing LeBron early on in his career he got a like he <laughs> he was a uh, a lot of people a lot of people used to lay into LeBron because early in his career. It's like LeBron is actually a pass first type of uh, type of player. What do you mean by that? Pass first. He's looking to get his teammates involved. Like oh, pass first. Pass gotcha, first. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So they used to call him very passive on the court because now he could. LeBron never had a problem scoring though. Never had a problem. He used to do it. It used to look effortless. But then when crunch time came in the game, adversity hit. Oftentimes in the you know at the beginning of his career he used to pass it, and then all of a sudden people like oh why he didn't take that shot, mm-hmm. and then for example if somebody else take the shot and they miss it it's on LeBron regardless LeBron you should have took that shot why yeah, you didn't yeah, take yeah, it you true. the man that's crazy and so they said you know a lot of people looked at it like oh he don't want that X on his resume so he he never took the shot then as his you know as as his career continued to evolve then he started taking the shot. He missed the shot. Then they started comparing him to other players. And I bet you if Mike took the shot, Mike would have hit the shot. Or Kobe would have hit that shot or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No matter what LeBron did at points in his career, he was always going to be he's gonna always be classified, you know, one way or another or put against another great, you know. But see, that, that just, it, it, again, that's another part of adversity. You're just going to, being the man means that, you know, you don't want that people looking to, to you know, blame. They're looking to, they, when you do right, well, he's supposed to do it. You know, really, a lot of people look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, about time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's real. Nobody really want to give you your due. Then I thought she was actually, I thought she was actually going to come at it from this angle. Um, see, another thing about LeBron, you know, his, uh, his stats in the finals. LeBron has made it to the finals many times, mm-hmm. you know. But the problem is he's made it to the finals many times, and the reason why he's not considered on the same uh, the same level as Michael Jordan for a lot of people, he's like, okay, he made it to the championship, but look how many times he's lost. Every time Mike made it to the championship, Mike won. But granted, I say this again. I say this here. You look at the type of teams that Michael Jordan was on, and then you look at the type of teams LeBron was on a lot of times. And to be honest, what you look at the caliber, you know, competition that LeBron went against versus Michael, and it was different. Like, Michael didn't have to run into a team that actually shattered the single season record that him and his Bulls had made one year. That's Steph Curry, and, and, you know, and, and Golden State. Let alone, then the very next year, they went and added another, you know, lethal weapon on their team, Kevin Durant. I mean, you talk about adversity, man. Like, it's it's been stacked. You, <laughs> you know, I feel you on that. You I know? definitely understand that. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna leave that alone because that become that sports talk, and that can take you know many <laughs> many different turns. Like that, this topic alone, man, to get viewership, man, and then people start chirping. <laughs> sports talk is different, man, because some people it be is, like though. you know, they, they, man, LeBron was the one. That, yeah, LeBron was the one came and they assembled a super team. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> you got an X on your back now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we probably just got more viewership. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, bro. So we got um, take advantage of the opportunities, complacency. Um, that's another thing I want to touch on. Um, and the definition I looked up was feeling a calm satisfaction with your own abilities or situations that prevent you from trying harder. A lot of times I've seen it play out in my own life. Like you get some good results, you start a new job or something like that, and you you hitting it, you killing it. Then you start to slack off as you start to get results. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that prevents you from making that switch. Why do you think you start to slack off? Because you're getting results. And everybody patting you on the back, everybody giving you a good job, and it's like, dang, bro, like this is too easy. Like I'm, I'm Bingo. killing it. Bingo. Bingo. It becomes easy. Mm-hmm. That's the part about life that you, you often... Oftentimes you wonder. We living in the generation that we live in, right? Instant gratification. We're looking for instant results. It's, it still boils down to the get rich quick scheme, right? But when something becomes easy, then really and truly, what do you tend to do? You, slack. You start to slack. Mm-hmm. And Cut you corners. don't exactly. You don't 
pay attention to the details anymore yep. because you feel like you know this, like the back of your hand. And what does that do? In, in, okay, what does that do when you do that? When, when you take and you start slacking off and you, you know, you're not even looking at the details anymore, then what happens? That's when you make mistakes. You make mistakes. That's when it all, yeah. That's real. It starts bro. to unravel mm-hmm. it. And I I heard somebody say it's like, bro, when you like you think when you make it, like, bro, I'm about to make it, I'm about to take a vacation, I'm about to chill. And it's like, bro, if you stop doing what you what if you stop doing what got you to where you at, then you're just gonna go back to where you were. But then we're talking about the hunger. The hunger is what got you there in the first place. Mm-hmm. So again, a proverbial light switch. The proverbial light switch was flipped in the beginning through your hunger. Your hunger was your drive. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, it's like the process felt your theory. Then the moment you made it, then all of a sudden you got comfortable. And you said, oh, it's all cool. I know how to flick the light switch. Facts. Where is it? How do you flip the light switch when you've made it? That's crazy, bro. That's crazy that you say that because that's real, man. Like, you 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 start you killing it, you doing you doing what you need to do, and then it starts to get easy, then you start to slack off, and then boom, it's like you're making hella mistakes. You're making plenty of mistakes. That's just like now it's like, bro, chaos almost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um contacts, you know what I'm saying? Like building your contacts that 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 grow you. Meaning like, are you around certain people that grow you? You know what I'm saying? Having those that friend group, that circle. Those people around you that's like pushing you, that stretch you, um, that make you want to step up your game. And not in, like in an envy way or a jealousy way, but because that person showing you what your present, what your potential is. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's just like those three things I feel like is why you need to do it. Now transition into how do you harness it, right? Uh, we talked about having an opinion. Speaking on your opinion, speaking, adding, adding a contribution, whether it's right or wrong, you got to add something to the to the equation. You feel me? Um, we talked about adversity and how you got to keep that focus throughout the throughout your day, just throughout your day, your everyday activities, and don't think it's about you. Uh, not not understanding that it's not about you. You know, it's about the impact that you can make and who you can help. You know what I'm saying? I think that adding value. <clears throat> Excuse me, adding value, man. Like just helping somebody else, helping this team, helping the helping the situation. Not thinking that because you were involved, it's about you, but thinking that you know I'm adding a contribution, a piece to the pie. I'm adding a piece to the pie. I'm not the pie. You know what I'm saying? Now let me What's let up? me ask let me ask you something on that for a second. Oftentimes, man, when you when you in when you invest in something that's bigger than yourself, yeah. you're a part of the process, right? Yeah. Oftentimes, a lot of people, they shrink when they get around a lot of creative-minded people. And why do you think they shrink? Because they look at it like, okay, in a sense- I ain't got what they got. I would think, that, you know what I'm saying? Along with, you know what, um, well, really and truly, you know, um, I just, you know, I, I'm going to just help however I can. But sometimes what it takes is this here. You have to think for, for you have to think for a moment and say, okay, I'm here, but I'm not here just to be a waste of space. Facts. What do I have that I can help uh, provide that's that's lacking within this whole ordeal? What is something that I'm great at doing that right now we're missing? You have to think sometimes outside of the box. And then, you know what I'm saying, apply that. Apply that element, and then that's what it make that element or that, you know, you'll make that whole process become even bigger or you enlarge, you know, upon something that's already, it could be already, it could be big, but it could always be bigger. And what the one ingredient that could always be missing is you. It's like, and that's sometimes it could, it could be something as small as personality, a personality trait you have that nobody else has. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, people always like back in the day, people used to always talk about swag. Be like, man, hey, buddy got that. Yeah. He got mad swag. But again, it's like, you know, the confidence. Swag doesn't happen without confidence. And it's just a it's a genuine confidence you have in self. It's just like, you know, somebody walk up in there and they, I'm here, baby. You know, <laughs> Facts. but it's like Facts, man. But we already had on people too. Exactly. We already we, we we can all think back to a person like that. Exactly. You know walk saying? in a room and immediately they 
they demand attention just because they're in the room. Facts. You're like, bruh, I've been in a thousand meetings before, but it took this yeah. one brother to walk in this room, man, and then all of a sudden the room lit up. <laughs> Changed the whole atmosphere, bro. Exactly. That charisma, man. Exactly. And they say, you know what? From now on, we're going to have the meeting, but Bobby has to be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're like, why we'll Bobby got to be here? Exactly. Exactly. Change and then all of a dynamic. sudden, you, yeah, you that element. That's real, though, man. Never think, never, you never think light of yourself. You belong as well. I, I, that's a good segue, man, because it's like, how do you show up? Was my next point. Um, and it, it makes us think that, like, especially in the entertainment industry, like, man, it makes us think that showing up in the most ignorant and showing the most ignorant parts of ourselves, bro, the most bad parts of ourselves is how we're going to get attention. And I think, like, showing the best, brightest version of yourself, um, will reap more benefits than having that cloud of your head of the ignorant side of yourself. You Dress for saying? success. And it's just like, bro, just show up, man. Like, how are you showing up? You feel me? How are you being perceived? Again, that segues back to effort. That effort. Facts. Facts. But when you show up, you make sure that you have, show up, you know, what the, the, uh, the commercial, you, they used to always talk about with toys, batteries not included. Yeah. Effort should be included. Hmm. <laughs> when you show up, man, shirt, bro. That, exactly. Yeah. You show up with that. Hey, you show up with that backpack. Effort <laughs> is included. That's it, man. I like that, man. I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, bro. That's fire. Oh, uh, it's hard to make that switch, man. Like I was listening to a song, and this time I it the, the title of the song was Hard Switch, and it's like the road less travel. He was talking about a road less travel or never travel. Maybe you never seen nobody do what you about to do or do what you're trying to do. Not in your immediate circle. You know what I'm saying? You seen it on TV, maybe in a magazine or something. Um, but it's like switching habits, you know what I'm saying? Switching lifestyles, switching those friends, uh, sometimes family, you know what I'm saying? That's like hard, bro. Like that's super hard. And I think the crazy part is for people making that switch, it's the hardest thing they ever going to do in their life. But from the person looking from the outside in, uh, it looks like they did that switch overnight, the overnight success, you know what I'm saying? But what you miss is the internal battles that you go through. You know what I'm saying? I want to read something real quick, man, if I may. All right, so check this out. It says when you when you make a choice to mm-hmm. want it better, to hold on. When you make a choice to want better, you do better. You have to sometimes remove yourself completely. No announcements, no agenda. Just go. Surrender yourself with people who won't keep you stuck in mediocrity. Keep in mind this is necessary because not everyone around you wants better for themselves. And comf- okay, and comfortability where they are. Let's see, which is you are also responsible for you. They will either evolve with you or get left. Remove those habits that are serving you no good. Refrain from environments that suck you into a lifestyle you need to ev- uh, elevate them. Elev- excuse me, elevate from. Excuse me. Take a real look at yourself and take accountability for where you are and where you need to be. Most importantly, seek God every step of the way. You wrote that? No. Oh, I was like, yo, that's crazy, bro. That's no, deep, though. It is. That's deep, man. This that's is something. Bro. This is something my wife sent me today. That's crazy, dog. And I, you know, I, I wanted to know if this was something that they, I don't. I believe she wrote this, you know, I don't know if she got it from, look, man, that thing hit me, though. It, it, it hit me hard. And this is like, man, like, when you building something, man, it's like, bruh, like, and that's the thing. I think, I think in life, when you know, when you know you on, you know, you in route to do something great or you building something great, you know, depending on how much uh, resistance you face, how much adversity you start to face when you in the you know you in the midst of building that lets you know what you're trying to build. Facts. If it's if but I it's, feel like my bad. I ain't mean to cut ahead. you off. Mm-hmm. Dog. I feel like that's so confusing, man. Like for myself, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, all right, cool. You're trying to build something. You see the vision in your head. You see what is what what you think it could be, but then you meet resistance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, some heavy resistance. Um. 
it's like, bro, how do you know if you should keep going? You know what I'm saying? Like, where where does that come in? Where where does the sign to say I see the sign for resistance, but where does the sign that comes in to say keep going? This is what you're supposed to do, bro. Look no further than that. The resistance. Think about it, man. I want you to really stop and think about this for a second. Okay. Everybody that's listening, stop and think for a second. All right. If you're doing something, okay, it's no different than when I'm on the court playing ball, right? You jump out to a significant lead. Say the game go to 32. All of a sudden, man, the score is 16 to 2. You halfway there. Now, all of a sudden, something's going to have to change. The defense that they're running not working. So now, all of a sudden, somebody says, forget it. We're being beat physically. I'm about to get into this player's head and I'm about to try to make this a psychological game. Now they start popping off at the mouth, trash talking you. Now all of a sudden, it's a different type of resistance. It's a different type of, you know, now, you know, it's, it's deeper now. Mm-hmm. Buddy's saying some stuff that's deeper than the court. Now that's getting in your head, getting in your team head. And now all of a sudden, before you blink, man, now y'all have gone on a drought. Now it's... Let's just say now it's 20 to 14. At this point, it's a game again. Mm-hmm. It's a game. Now, are you going to go back to the basics or what was working at the beginning, tune out the noise, get back to playing ball, or what you going to do, or is it too late now? Because he's already, he's found real estate in your mind. That's, uh, it made me think like, okay, the, you said physical, right? Like mm-hmm. you got physical presence, physical resistance, but then you got internal resistance also. And the mental. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I think that's maybe the hardest part to, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, it's the hardest part to internalize is because you can't see internal battles. You can't see internal adversity. You know what I'm saying? No, yes, you can. How? Because I'm thinking like physically, if you punch in my face, because right, I if, see, I'm, I if, I'm a, if I'm your defender, okay. if I'm your defender and you doing work on me, I'm watching all your moves, but I can't stop your moves. Now I'm, I'm going off. I'm hammering all kind of foolishness home in your mind. I'm hoping something click. The moment I know something click, now I'm looking you in your eyes and I can tell. I just struck a chord. Now I can see into your soul. They say I, the eyes are the gateway to the soul. So now I know, you know what? I just planted a seed. I'm going to come back now. I'm going to tear his head up now. Mm. I'm going to keep hammering home. Because whatever it is, I just, something. Look, I just planted a seed in them, and now I'm about to water that seed. So it's always going to be something that lets you know that you broke through it's that resistance. It's always something. Got it's you. always something. But it's on you to be detailed enough to understand, okay, hmm. Yeah, I just made up stump his toes just now. That's the first time I seen this form all off just now. It's something I said. So now you even ask, was it something I said? <laughs> you, Mr. Ball Player, did I say something wrong? Because <laughs> just a minute ago, you didn't miss no shots. Got you. You know what? They say, you know what? Forget it. Throw him the ball. Throw him the ball. I want him to get the ball now. I want him to get the ball. So is it the same, like, okay, you talking from a defensive standpoint. Is it the same for the person that's offensive? Like, you pushing to make whatever happen. Maybe it's basketball. Maybe it's a business. Maybe Now you're overcompensating. So it's like, okay, if I'm that person that's pushing against resistance, how do I know that I've broken through the resistance? Because the resistance knows when it broke you. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you've broken through the resistance? See, that's the thing. When you get back to just playing the game that you were playing before. When you were having mm. fun, there was no pressure. Got you, got you, got you. Now, you fighting against pressure. Pressure that this man has put right in front of you. That's when you know, but see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Going back to where, like, where, where it all started from with this particular conversation, right? It's like this here. You know for a fact, you on the right path. When the moment you face resistance and you face, you know, you face all of these these factors, that's when you know you're doing something right. Because if you were doing something wrong, I already know it's like this here. Somebody looking at you on the court and say, Well, I'm a guard him. He playing for us. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm that's saying? That's crazy, bro. That's how that's the crazy. enemy does in life. That's if, crazy, why, dog. Okay, that's when you know you messed up. That's, that's when deep, you know bro. you're done. <laughs> well, you you know you done because you go out there, man, and just like, bro, like, That's you crazy, seem like bro. you ain't getting no resistance at all. That mean chances are you already on the wrong team. <laughs> you already when you when when have you ever been on a basketball court and somebody's just gonna give a man 
15 straight shots. That's go ahead, man. Go ahead. Take the shot. Take the shot. You like, bro, ain't nobody going to play defense, though. Go ahead and take the shot, bro. Go ahead. We want you to shoot. That's crazy. We want you to shoot. That's crazy. And as soon as he thought up, you know he with us anyways. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's all psychological. That's but real, what I'm man. saying is, in life, man, when you playing, when you, whatever it is in life that, you know, whatever you doing, man, the moment you start facing it, Adversity and resistance. I'm talking about heavy adversity and resistance. Then you know you on your way to doing something great. Gotcha. Because the fact this state, the means, this brother got to be stopped. Because he about to tap into something that's great. He mm-hmm. about to be on his way. We got to do throw a we gonna throw a we gonna throw our all out blitz on him. Look, he can't beat us, let everybody else beat us. Because we know for a fact, even if it's on everybody else, they're not gonna build what he's gonna build. That's one hundred percent real, bro. My That's how it goes, it down, man. man. That's, That's how it real, goes. Dog. That was deep. That's that how was it goes, deep, man. Hey, I'm bro. telling you. That was deep, man. That's what I'm saying. Like oh, for example, man. you go back to Martin Luther King. You spoke on him, right? Yeah. So, Martin Luther King, even Malcolm X. We talked about this before. Yep. You know, individuals like that in the '60s, right? They were already deemed what the the coming. They were deemed the coming black messiahs. Mm-hmm. So, number one. They had already had eyes on him, on their every move. They had eyes on him because people already knew their potential. Now, Martin, uh, Martin Luther King, he was seen as, okay, for, for a while they looked at him and they said, okay, the good thing about this brother here is the fact he's trying to bring people together. So really and truly, he's not... He's not di- he's not displaying any type of uh, violent behavior or assembling the people to go against, you know. So uh, with that, he was, you know, cool. Mm-hmm. Let him do his thing for the most part. Malcolm X over there, people looked at him and automatically and a lot of people villainized him because they said every time you looked at him, a lot of people, all they look at with Mal- uh, Malcolm X is by any means necessary. But a lot of people don't even know what this speech entailed itself. You see what I'm saying? But again, my thing is this here. Martin Luther King came back years later after the I Have a Dream speech. And he spoke about how his dream had become a nightmare. Then he came back and then, you know, in the midst of another speech, he started talking about, you know, he pretty much told our history. He really told our history. He talked about, you know, how, you know, government, you know, government funded schools and stuff like that were built. And then he went on and he explained how it was unfair, how we were treated. And then at the end of the day, they were asking us to, you know, pull ourselves up by our own bootstrap, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm paraphrasing now. But he went on and he said something that was powerful. He said at toward the end of his speech, he said, and when we make it to Washington, we're coming for our checks. He didn't say we coming there to ask for our check. He said we're coming for our checks. Well, he didn't make it because all of a sudden, again, the coming black Messiah, the one thing that kept him away from, you know, a a lot of times people wasn't looking at really like trying to harm him because, again, it was nonviolence. But when he said we coming for our checks, again, you always the one thing that I've learned about in life, man, for the most part, you you accountable for self. Facts. But the moment you you speak and you say we, you include others. See, you don't know what somebody else has the potential to do. Nah, that's so now, true. then all of a sudden, if you're a leader in this type of, you know, like an impactful leader, it's like now all of a sudden a message must be sent. Mm-hmm. You got a force behind you. Exactly. True. Exactly. I feel that 100%. That's real, bro. We brought that down deep. Um. I got some final thoughts I want to say, dog. Let's go ahead, man. <clears throat> I don't really know who need to hear this, man, or who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to myself. Uh, but you can't be lukewarm. You can't be lukewarm. You know, like, I got to ask myself, you know, sometimes, am I lukewarm with this podcast? Am I really taking it serious or am I going to jump in? And I got to take this opportunity serious. Whatever opportunity, podcast, life, family, friendships, uh, work opportunities. Lukewarm, man, causes a lot of people to quit. Uh, you have doing it looking for validation maybe from other people, but you got to jump in before somebody takes you serious. Fully commit, whatever form that looks like for you. Uh, but you can't be lukewarm, man. You got to take it serious. So um, 
to to flip that to bring it full circle, man. To flip that proverbial light switch. Uh, don't be lukewarm, man. Take it serious. Take those opportunities serious. Notice, notice those habits that need to switch up. Those lifestyle changes that need to happen, and uh, fully jump in, man. Fully commit to that. Write it down. View the, view what you write down. Read, read what you wrote down, and then materialize. Begin to ter- materialize. Uh, change some things around in your life to make those things happen. I like that, man. Um, so for me. I got a little something that I want to say. Uh, it's a little different. It's, nah, go ahead, bro. It's, it's very different, actually. So, um, earlier this week, man, I got a, uh, I got a call, and it was, um, it was a, it was a traumatizing call, actually. Um, if uh, whoever's under the sound of my voice right now, if you, if you have children that's in the school system, um have children period or family members that's in school I say this here first and foremost we got to normally I try to I try to you know get away from this but uh, as the brother said um, ain't about being lukewarm with this I'm gonna I'm go all the way in on this and I'm gonna say this here that we need to pray for these children um that's going to schools, these children that's in other people's cares, um, because the moment that we become detached from our children or the moment that we become detached from God, period, you know, we allow ourselves to risk so many different losses in our life. Uh, My son, he went to school and got a call from my wife stating that the school was on lockdown because it was an active shooter uh, event that transpired. My thing is this here. To, get, to receive a call like that, you know, you look on the news all the time and you see these, these situations. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's different when you, when you experience it, you know, on a personal level. It's different. Yeah. It's real different, you know. As a grown man, you know, we, we try to we try to appear so tough, but that stuff out of our hands and you, you figure out that you're so vulnerable, you know. But again, I just say pray, pray, because again, I said it earlier. One thing about it, you can you you can you can speak on behalf of self and what you know you would do and what you know you wouldn't do in a lot of cases, but you can't speak on behalf of somebody else. So I say this here. The one thing that we can do is we can pray. And so prayers, they do change things. So thankfully, you know, my child is fine. And for the most part that I know of, everybody else's child is fine. But it's situations in which this thing could have went left or situations such as this, they did go left. Facts. So again, I say this here, everybody, you know, come together and, you know, again, we all, we just need to start, we, we need to make this a, a conversation that needs to be had. Like what all needs to change in the school system, you know, uh, protection for the, for the teachers and protection for the children. Cause I'm not trying to come from this one sided, but again, we need to meet up and we need to really focus on making a change that needs to be had. I think, uh, and not not to start up anything, but I think that's a way to uh, flip a proverbial light switch in itself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just pre- um, preventive, pre- preventive maintenance. You know what I'm saying? Preventive precautions. And measures, I, yeah. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, bro. So, uh, we're going to stop it right here, man. We're going to end it right here. I appreciate everybody listening. This is the Real Talk Podcast. And uh, until next week, man, peace. Peace.